Hello everyone, welcome back to another print tutorial. This time we will be looking at changing the phenotype column in the Plink files. This video is a follow-up to a recent discussion with Mohamed Shamim, who was asking exactly this in the comment section of the Genomics Bootcamp. So I thought it might be a good idea to follow it up. So people who have a similar question might get also a satisfying answer. For this occasion, I put together a small test data, which has five individuals from three populations. So you see that the family ID is population one, two, three, and there are individuals one to five. It is really just a small test genomic data. So the genotype side now is not really important. What we will concentrate on is this last column, the sixth column, which are the phenotypes. So in the previous videos, I told you that the phenotypes most of the time are not important if we want to do, for example, an FST analysis or linkage disequilibrium or things like that. But of course, it is very important if we want to do, for example, an association analysis or a genome-wide association study. We will not do a GWAS now, but we will just show how to update this phenotype column. So if you need it for this or some other purpose that actually needs the exact phenotype to appear in the Plink files. For the most basic update, we will use this small file that is saved in the same directory as the Plink exe and also the other genotype files. So the test data pad and the test data map. So as you see, this height data, because while well, I took the phenotype just as an example, human height. So the structure of this data file is exactly the same as the pet file. You see that there are the five individuals and the first column. So the family ID and the individual ID is exactly the same. And the third column is actually the updated phenotypes that belong to each individual. What we will do is we will use Plink to update this phenotype column using the dash dash pheno option. You can read about this option in the Plink 1.9 website. This is the most relevant paragraph right now. Actually, it describes the file as I was showing you before. So back in R, we just cleared the workspace and set the working directory as usual. After that, we run the phenotype update running line 11 here. So for this small example, we use the test data pad and map file. So we use the dash dash file option and we will create a new pad and map file with recode and the name would be pheno updated pad and pheno updated map. The main part of this line is this dash dash pheno high data dot txt, which will use the updated phenotype measures from the hide data dot txt file as I showed you before. If we check our working directory, so we see that this pheno updated pad and map file were created and we see that it contains the actual updated phenotype values. So with this, our phenotype updating was a success. Of course, sometimes we might have a situation that we don't have just one phenotype measurement for an individual, but we have more measurements. And actually we want to check on these multiple measurements for our research. So I created also this test file to simulate this situation. So these are the five individuals with the population one, two, three as before, but this time there is also a header line. So the first uh, column is called FID for family ID. The second column is called IID for individual ID. And these are the exactly the same individual IDs that we had in the pet file. And then there are the different phenotypes. These are also named. So it's height as before, then weight and shoe size of course, as an example. Now there are different ways how to refer to these phenotypes. They could be referred to by number. So the height is the phenotype one, weight is phenotype two, and shoe size phenotype three. So one, two, and three. Also, they could be referred to by name, and we will show both of these possibilities in the follow-up script. For this, we will use the mpheno and the pheno name options also from Plink. For example, we want to refer now to the second phenotype that is the weight. So we do exactly the same as before. So Plink test data as an input. Now we use the dash dash pheno option, but 
we changed, of course, the file name because these phenotype measurements are, sa are saved into the phenotype measures.txt file. So we changed this and we use additionally to the dash dash pheno also the dash dash m pheno option. And we say that we want the second phenotype. So there is a space here and the number two. Again, we do a recode because we want to do a pet file and then the output file name is pheno updated weight and version one. I just switch back here to the Pling manual quickly just to ensure that all of us are on the same page. So we use each dash dash pheno and file name as before. And so here are the dash dash in pheno or the dash dash pheno name options. And both of these have an additional variable that could be specified. So in the case of mpheno, there is a number. So which number of the phenotype you want or the, with the dash dash pheno name, the exact column name as it appears in the file that is specified with the dash dash pheno option. So this is what we will going to do. So back in R, we do exactly this. So we specify the phenotype measures and dash dash pheno too. We run this and see what happened to the phenotype updated weight version one file. So you see here that the phenotype column was correctly updated with the weight for each individual. Of course, we could also do this with the option when we name the column. So we use the dash dash pheno name and we say weight. That's because this word, so this was actually the column name in the phenotype measures.txt file. This also runs without problems. It creates, for this example, the pheno updated weight version two, which is actually exactly the same as version one because we refer to the same thing here with number, with the dash dash m pheno option, and here with the actual column name with the dash dash pheno name option. This kind of update is fine if you have a few phenotype measures or if you want some very specific phenotype in your pad and map file. But for example, if you have hundreds of phenotypes, then probably you are looking for a more automated procedure. Here you might consider loops. Here I give an example for such loop, which creates pad and map files for all the three phenotype options. If you want to go this way, uh, you have to be a bit cautious because this actually creates copies of the genotype files, so pad and map files. So of course, if you have, for example, with the pad and map file, let's say one gigabyte, and we ha you have uh, 50 phenotypes, and if you do this, you will take up 50 gigabytes of hard disk space because it will be 50 times the copy of the genotypes with updated phenotype column. Of course, there are also options how to avoid this so you don't have to copy the pad and map files so many times. I will make a few remarks on that towards the end of this video. But right now, let's go with this solution. So I have a new variable here just to make everything clear. So this is the number of measures is equal to three right now because this is how many phenotype measurements we have in the phenotype, me phenotype measures.txt file. We have a loop here, which has one variable that changes all the time from one to the number of phenotype measures. So it's in the first loop is one, the second loop is two, and the third loop is three. And we use the pay zero here option that actually pays together this line and it changes the number with the dash dash m pheno option from one to two to three. And of course, we don't want to overwrite the output files. So we create also new ones each time. So the pheno updated rate one, two, and three. So you see here that the new files are being created. So this is for trait one or phenotype one, phenotype two, and phenotype three. And if you run this or a similar example, then what you will see is that each of these pad files have an updated phenotype column accordingly. This solution is okay, but not the best. If you have seen my previous video where I talk about data management, uh, one of the advices there is that you need to have very good file names for everything. And trait one and two and three uh, doesn't tell all that much. What we could do is actually use this dash dash pheno name option 
in a very similar way. And that one would denote the pattern map files in a much better way. So here is how it looks like. You see, it's very similar. Now the measures are changed to height, weight, and shoe size. So this is, well, these are the column names from the phenotype measures.txt file. And we will use these words in the Plink uh, line. So again, there is a for loop and there is an, a variable i that will change from one to the length of this vector. In this case, the length of the vector is three because there are three items in it. So with this expression, we refer in the first loop to the first element of this n measures vector, which is the height. And we will also use this word, the height, or in the file name for the pet file. So also in the out statement. So the output file will be called pheno updated trade underscore height. In the second iteration or the second loop, it will be the second element of the vector. So it will be the weight. And the third loop will be referring to the shoe size. We run this loop and with the help of the dash dash pheno and the dash dash pheno name, and with always changing the name of the phenotype column, we got the appropriate output files. If we look at these files now, so we see that we have the new pad and mat files and here with the weight, shoe size and height with all phenotypes updated accordingly. So this is how you do the update of the phenotype column using Plink and there are multiple options. But before you go, here is a piece of advice I was mentioning about avoiding the necessity to copy or recreate the pattern map files all the time. Of course, what you could do is use your, this loop to your advantage and then basically just reusing the same genotype files all the time, for example, for a GWAS analysis. As a first step, you update the phenotype files or the phenotype columns rather, and you use these files for the GWAS analysis. After that, what you could also do is do the visualization straight away from the GWAS results. So basically what you save only are just the GWAS output files and the visualization files or the actual pictures or plots. And with the second loop, you update it to the next phenotype you run the GWAS again, a visualization again, and you basically avoid saving or avoid the necessity of saving the oftentimes large genotype files, which are really not so different from each other, but the, just the phenotype column is updated. But for now, we leave it here. Let me know if you have any questions or comments in the comment section below. Thank you for your time and have a very nice day.